Alright, welcome back. I'll just go over the functions which I've changed. So, all these vector functions, I turned them into just, they take vectors and just call dot x dot y, which I don't know why I wasn't doing that in the first place. Um, I did an add, so I don't necessarily, wait, I don't need that just yet. Doesn't hurt to have, I, I used to have need to have it but then things change, so never mind. And an assign. So it takes one vector and another and makes the first equal to the second. Okay, so in circle, I... Well, here we go. Here's a use of assign. Uh, circle 1 <laughs> is being treated as a vector because it's got x and y. That, that works. Um, so we just do midpoint add the normal times negative circle 1 radius. So, if we look at our diagram, since the normal points that way, we want to go in the opposite direction by radius. So we'll shove circle 1 to be out here. And same for circle 2, except it's positive and using circle 2's radius, as you can see. Right, and the result, if we get it, looks like this. Check that out. Check that out. How, how cool does that look? <laughs> this, this is like I can't believe I haven't seen this sort of thing all over the place. It's, it's so simple. You just just keep them shoved off each other. Don't change their velocity, and they get this kind of behavior. It's pretty awesome, um, but not what we're after, unfortunately. In fact, I want to see I want to see them blue, more like water. It's it's got this watery kind of look. And instead of white, let's say cyan. Uh, too, too simple. Mm. Light blue or something. 64, 28, 255, something like that. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Whoa, that seems slower. Like significantly slower just from that. Nah, I must be seeing things. Anyway, we're gonna f we're gonna speed things up later with my experimental algorithm, which is probably done everywhere. Nothing new, nothing new. Anyway, what are we up to? We're up to making them bounce off each other. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll just stick with this. This is cool. No, I don't want to change this. This is cool. I like this. Let's go with this. <laughs> I love it. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm boring you. <laughs> How long have I spent? I've spent two minutes just gawking over that. Right. Right, so now we can get into the optimization. Okay, so what I aim... So this optimization, we're going to have to divide the world up into segments. So each each of these, so the the X and the Y will have slicing. Um, I'm just wondering where I should store this kind of data. It's only within circles, so so I'll just I'll just chuck it up here within the circle file. So uh, X slices equals. Okay, so what's a good number? This is. Let me just print screen and have a play. So we want to let's just keep dividing by half. There's that. There's that. There's that. And if we go smaller, I'm pretty sure as your boxes get smaller and smaller, the more efficient it becomes. The only issue is, like, if you make them one pixel big, there's, like, way too much memory and other problems. But anyway, we'll make them relatively small. Smaller than what I originally had in mind. So, something like this. So, what is this? And they don't have to be square either. Okay, so what is this? This was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, divide by 8. 
that size. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, just divide each side by eight. We'll make it a variable there. In fact, the y can be divided by seven or or six. Yeah, we'll go six, just to kind of make it square. So the x slices is eight, and the y slices will be six. And now we want our, I guess it's a collision grid. Yeah. Collision grid. Hmm. Hmm. Um. These need to be integers, I think. I want to... No, uh, should be right. What do, every time we have a circle, we want to know which grid it's in. So if we divide by this size, so we want to have that width readily available. So, yeah, I'll just add more. Um, slice x, slice size equals width divided by x slices. Easy. So our collision grid will equal well in it in it will do it. So circle list Actually the collision grid needs to be set every single frame to be empty and then circles will put themselves in it. So it doesn't matter what it equals, it's just gonna be set. Okay. Clear collision grid. Empty list. Alright, so what can I so for if we wanna it'll be like we still wanna do like in array terms x and then y, so it'll have x slices number of thing I so for we'll need the ij again. y equals zero is this an x slices i plus plus So every time this happens, you want to add a thing to the... You want to add a new list here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then every time that happens, you want to also add a new one of these, but to the I. Yeah. So it's a list of lists of lists. And in these lists will be the individual circles to compare against. Yeah. So what will happen is the next step is circles put themselves in the grid. Duh. And then, when it comes to this kind of thing, instead of going through the entire circle list, you just go through each grid list. So it's still going through every single circle, like, and, and it's also got this overhead twice. Well, yeah. Um, but you don't get this quadratic kind of thing so badly. Yeah. So, um, let me check the time. Yeah, almost out of time. Okay, let's see. Well, half a minute. I'm not going to be able to do much in half a minute, so I'll just end this here and come back later. See you then.